everything might not be fun. Yeah, the politicians keep saying, what's why is their healthcare system so expensive? And like, duh. How does that make any sense? We'll figure it out. This is the thing, I'm just getting totally engaged now, and I don't know what to do. Hey, I'm here again with Paula. Hey there. And Stopping we, again in the middle of the run. Which she doesn't like, but we just finished a 50K. Yeah. Yes, we did. In Patapsco, which yes, was Patapsco. like supposed to be 32 miles, but was 34 miles. Right. And right. we knew it was long and we were a little pissed. But <laughs> the good thing was there's a lot of food in the middle. All sorts of stuff. Yeah, it was good food. Pancakes, quesadillas, quesadillas peanut butter and peanut jelly. Peanut butter sandwiches, M&Ms. Yeah, ginger ale. So we, we did a lot of eating and Paula felt eight times or nine. Yeah. Was it eight? Eight, eight. eight. I, I felt, eight felt eight twice. Times. And at the end those two extra miles they added i fell but anyway but we were smiling at the end so the other thing is paula has started her restaurant which we have not even talked about in this right. which she's been dreaming about forever um called Gigi's grace georgia, and georgia grace. grace and it's been a real success and she's been busy as all heck so i wanted to tell you about something i deal with every day that maybe you could relate to. okay go ahead so as a doctor we've talked about a lot of the tests and things you do um, but we are under a lot of pressure to do things told to us that we have to do. So when we're sitting in front of the computer typing all the time, we don't want to do that. We didn't, I mean, I'm, I took a typing course in 11th grade. I'm really good. Thank God. It's the most important course I took right. in preparation for medical school, for being okay. a doctor, because medical school was useless. So at least I had that under my belt. At least I got some teaching <laughs> earlier on. Um, so I could type really fast and I could type like this while I'm looking at you. Okay. Great skill. So it looks like I'm actually... Wait, but you could probably make mistakes on like medicines and stuff. If you no, no, like no. I can't okay. because I review everything. Okay. I look over everything. before. When it's medicines, I have to click. Oh, okay. That's good. clicking. That so makes me feel better. That's a whole different more. So we, we're typing because we have to. It's a requirement. Okay. And we have to ask you a lot of questions. We have to ask you about health screening. Get your blood pressure a certain way. Make sure that you've uh, taken certain medicines if you have certain conditions. And that's we as we, a patient, you have to ask me I about my to. past, right? It's about what's going on now. Oh, okay. A okay. lot of what's going on now. Have you had this test? Have you had that? And uh -huh. if you, if let's say, for instance, I say, did you get a mammogram? I have and you not. say no, I get dinged, and that goes against me if you don't get a mammogram, because I have to record how many of my patients have mammograms, and if it's below a certain percentage, they're going to take money away from me. So if you say, I don't want to get a mammogram because I read about the pros and cons yeah, of mammograms. Yeah, there's like all these new studies that say that there's so many false positives. So many false positives. Right. And some people, and the actual benefit is not that big. Okay. If you look at, I've shown you this theater yes. that shows, which BRCT, which shows out of a thousand people who are screened for a lifetime, one person benefits, but about 60 or 70 are going to have biopsies unnecessarily. And some people may look at that and say, one out of a thousand, I hate that test, it's no good. But if I explain that to you, and you decide not to get it, I get penalized. So, so it's better for me not to even explain it to you. It's better for me to say, time for your mammogram. And you say, I don't want to get a mammogram. I say, get in the mammogram. Right. You know, that's better. I get, I get... Wait, so if you explain it to me, and then I still say no, right. you get dinged. I get dinged. Okay. That's the way it is. Okay. And there's this list of things. So if you come to me as a patient... And you want to talk about some stuff. I'm feeling tired. You know, my knee is hurting. Which I have done. Which you have done. <laughs> and so, so if you want to talk about those things, I say, wait a minute. First, I got to ask you questions. Have you had a mammogram? Have you had this test? Did you go for bone density screening? What's your blood pressure? Is it low enough? Because of your list. Because of my list. Okay. The list that's imposed on me by above, by insurance companies, which, which starts with Congress, actually. They, they're the ones who created it. And by the time I get through my list... We're pretty much done with the visit. You'll say, "What about Wait, my knee?" And what you, about my don't tiredness? Don't you think it's good to have a list because then you, because you know, you you're you're getting older and you may forget to ask certain things. Well, Do you know what I mean? People make mistakes, right. so you have your list well, and you go down the list. So there's some benefit if the list was sensible, right? Okay. Or if it had to do with what you were interested in. But let's say you were in your restaurant. Okay. You, you had a guy coming in for falafel and wanted to get a latte and wanted to get a Greek salad. Yeah. It's a Greek-themed restaurant. Right. <laughs> it's a good restaurant. Um, we'll, we'll do some podcasts from the restaurant. But let's say then you say, well, before you order, sir, I got this list that I got to do for you first. It's mandated. Have you ever had an allergy to mayonnaise before? 
Have you? He said, I'm not ordering anything with mayonnaise. Right. But that doesn't matter. I got to ask you this question. Have you ever, um, have you ever burnt yourself walking through hot coals? <laughs> I mean, like, these are the kind of things I got to ask people okay. in medical lingo. Okay, so I and can by see the time you're done with the list, you say, I got to type it all in. Yeah, and the guy's probably not hungry anymore. And he, wants to and he says, well, yeah, I mean, I, I, but that's what we do with every patient. And a lot of the times the patients think the doctor's not paying attention to them. The biggest complaint patients have now is we are not focused on them. Right. We don't look at them. And you probably don't spend enough time with we them. We don't spend enough time with them because we are forced to see people quickly. Right. At least in primary care, we got to see people really fast because our whole revenue is based on generating income from seeing patients. Okay. We can't put in the stent. Okay. We don't got that in our back pocket. So we got to see patients. All right, well, so what do you want to do about it? My question is, you know, is it better for me as a doctor just to forget about the, the darn list? <laughs> just talk to you and hope it all works out in the end. Mind you, because we did that, because in our group, we decided, okay, we don't want to put all these old people who are, have dementia on statin cholesterol medicines, which were required yeah. of us because at some point they had some heart disease when they were 60. Now they're 92. And the, the list says you have to have them on statin cholesterol medicines. Because we didn't do that, we got dinged out of $80,000. Wait a minute, but but did the patient did the patient feel fine not being on those yeah, yeah. things? Because and those drugs be make it. people feel really tired right, right. and really bad. And we've talked about it in this podcast. And don't you think that older people by that time, like they know what makes right. them feel? They they are smarter than their, their family families, thinks. Their right? families don't want them on the medicine. There's no evidence the medicine works. Right. But the cardiology group that came up with this guideline has stated that they should be on the medicine. So by my letting them make the decision. In other words, a lot of these decisions that we have to make are not necessarily what the patient wants. Yeah, but the patient prevails in the end. They're allowed to make their own medical they, decisions. And, and we left them in okay. our group. And that you get penalized. $80,000. I don't know what to say. So what, what I'm saying is you are right. I think it's good that we have a list, right? right? We have a list of things we should talk about. But in the end, we shouldn't be judged by whether the patient gets that stuff or not. We should be judged by whether we have given the patient enough information, information to right. make a decision. Right. And if they made a decision that says they don't want a mammogram, yeah, they should, uh, they they, should be allowed we to make we that win. decision. But, but if we just say get the mammogram, I think we lose. I think any business that is based on lists. Wait, I need to stop you. Do the patients realize that you as physicians get penalized for not forcing them to take these things? I don't think they do. Because they need they to know that information so that you give them the information on all of these things and they they should make their own comprehensive decision after you give them the information. There, Period. <coughs> I had a patient recently who I was going to give him a pneumococcus vaccine. It's against pneumonia. Okay. And it doesn't help that many people. It's, right. a, it's a pretty impo impotent uh, immunization. Yeah, is the placebo effect? Placebo is good. Yeah. <laughs> good. Right. But no, not for this person because okay. this person was not a fan of immunization. So... She, she said, do I really need this test? I said, I showed her the numbers. You know, it was one out of 2,000 benefit, and the benefit was small. She said, you know what she said then? Well, are you going to get in trouble if I don't get this test? She said that? I said, yes, I am going to get in trouble if you don't get this test, but I'm not going to make you get this test. She said, I'll get the test. I mean, I'll get the immunization. She said that. She was aware wow. that I was going to get in trouble. Yeah. And I will. I, I do get Listen, in trouble, but really, I, I didn't give it. So just a, so you know, I This is a really it. dangerous thing because I come to the doctor, right, because I want to find out what's wrong with me. And I have my trust in the doctor, right? right? So if you're telling me I need to get this test, yeah. then I think I better get this test. Right. And it's, right? And it's bullshit. <laughs> to right. be perfectly So fun. it's a scary thing that people are really coming to their doctors because they trust them or they're not feeling well and they're going to listen to whatever you say. So if doctors are just making money on providing these tests... We're not making or, money, but we lose money if we don't do it. Don't it's a new system. They call it Very, quality and value in Medicare. Like it. And it means our quality means we're going to follow these checklists that are the same for every single person. So for instance, if a, an, an 80-year-old um, has blood pressure problems, but when I put them on too many medicines, they faint. Yeah. And so I say, well, let's not put you on the medicine. You're 80. You probably need a higher blood pressure. I get in trouble. But if I put them on enough medicines that they faint and break their hip, I pass. I'm good. It doesn't make any That's sense. the way it is. So, yeah, what should we do about it? Uh, you know, I, I bring it to all of your attention because when you go to your doctor, when they, when they say you should do this, that, and this, you could say, explain to me the risks and benefits. And you frankly shouldn't care. 
whether the doctor's going to be dinged on, on not right. doing it. Right. It's the doctor's responsibility to do the best thing for you, not right. to follow these checklists. And yeah, you should be pretty blunt about it. So I just wanted to tell you about that because I think you could relate in a restaurant what this would do to you yeah, as someone it, who wants to serve good food. I'm sure it would hurt my business. It, it would I feel suck. Like, yeah. <laughs> so that's that. Yeah. Okay, we're, we will All go right. running now. Wonderful. I promise. Hey. So if you're equally annoyed by our dysfunctional healthcare system and all the garbage you're being fed, then give me an email, log on to my website, which is listed down here. Let me know what you want me to talk about and I'll just keep feeding you information and we'll discuss this and hopefully make some changes. See you later.